And at this time, I'd like to introduce our speaker. Mark Stevens, Business Development Manager at Advanced Cooling Technologies, has over 25 years of senior management experience in the field of industrial controls and automation. His product development and field application experience was derived from working with such leading firms as Analog Devices and Phoenix Contact. Prior to joining ACT, Mark was president of Dynamic and Proto Circuits, a high-tech, multi-layer prototype circuit board company located in Grimsby, Ontario. Mark can be contacted at mark.stevens at one-act.com. So now I'd like to hand the webcast over to Mark. Mark? Hey, thank you very much, Amanda, and thank you everyone out there for tuning in today. Uh, the title, Reliable Enclosure Cooling Without Refrigerating Your Industrial Control Systems, is a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but uh, what we'd like to do today is maybe have you consider uh, using heat exchangers versus always looking to use air conditioners and applications. So just something to consider as we go through this presentation today. Uh, just a little brief overview. We'll have a little bit of background about ACT and who we are here at ACT. And then we'll talk about the methods to determine heat loads in uh, control cabinets. And then there are three technologies that we'll talk about today, our heat sink coolers, our heat pipe coolers, which are both heat exchangers, and then our ACTTEC thermal electric cooler, which is a subambient or air conditioning cooler. And then how to effectively select and price these cooling solutions and then some of the technical support that's available to you if you're interested in uh, trying to figure out how to specify this into your control system. Advanced Cooling Technologies was founded in 2003 and we're a very profitable, uh, relatively young company with over 100 employees with over 50,000 square feet of manufacturing space. Uh, some of our core values are innovation, customer care, and teamwork. And because of the level of, of uh, the work that we do here, we're both ISO 9000, and because we send things to space and that fly, we're AS9100 certified, which is like ISO 9001 on steroids. Uh, you're actually having to do a lot of traceability on everything that comes into your facility and goes out of your facility. There are two key groups here. We have a defense aerospace team, which focuses on electronics cooling for satellites, and uh, just to give you an idea, our cooling devices or our heat pipe devices, we probably have over 28 million hours on orbit on multiple satellite platforms, just as a little caveat. We do missile uh, cooling systems, directed energy weapons, and uh, card guides and chassis for military-type computer systems. And then in the industrial products area, we get into uh, LED cooling, medical device cooling, some automotive applications either in generation or um, taking a look at uh, how we can gain energy off of the exhaust of an uh, automotive uh, device using thermal electrics, uh, solar applications, temperature calibration, and then HVAC energy recovery, which is taking our large um, heat pipe technology and putting it inside of large air handlers. And then that same technology is shrunk down to do enclosure cooling. So. A lot of the things that we uh, do and learn and, and uh, create here are derived and used in other products. So in today's industrial cabinets, you have a higher component density, which we're all uh, used to. The things are getting smaller and smaller, but also the packages become hotter and hotter. <laughs> and so as you see applications like this where a, uh, a door is open, it's not only a hazard, uh, arc, as, arc hazard for shock, but uh, it's no real way to cool the electronics within that cabinet. And then also when we're taking uh, applications outdoors, you have a number of things to consider, the weather itself, sun loads, uh, what's the environment, is there a lot of dust or pollen or pollution out there? So today's uh, theme is gonna be sealed enclosure cooling. So uh, hopefully we'll uh, make a case for that as we go through these slides. And then just to give you a broad explanation of what we're talking about is that if the inside of your enclosure is hotter than the outside of your enclosure, then we would call that an above ambient cooling solution. So that would be our heat exchanger products. If the inside of your enclosure is uh, cooler than the outside, or I should say that the outside is hotter than the inside of your cabinet, 
Uh, then you would need to actually air condition it like you probably have typically done, or you can use a thermal electric cooler can be applied. And then total heat load considerations come from a couple things. Two main sources are the internal heat loads of the electrical components and equipment, and then of course the external heat transfer loads from the ambient temperature outside of the enclosure. So something like a sun load or if you're uh, panel is located near a furnace, some of that heat can be uh, brought back into your system. So you have to take a look at both of those things in your calculation to figure out what size heat exchanger or what size air conditioner you would need in, in an enclosure to cover those loads. So a very common way to cool an industrial co control cabinet today is with fan filters, and those require two holes in the cabinet like the application you see on the left. So essentially what you're doing is you're drawing in outside air or plant air that could have hydrogen sulfide gas, it could have chlorine, it could have high levels of dust or contaminants. You're drawing that in and over all of your control systems. If it's a real humid environment, you're making the internals of your cabinet wet and damp. And then as you go through the day, if the uh, temperature starts to go down, you could get condensation inside of that, that enclosure. So what we're talking about with ACT and our sealed enclosure coolers is that you would place a device, cut one hole, and then you're going to circulate the air in the inside and then reject the heat to the outside with our heat transfer methods that we'll discuss in a couple slides coming up. So again, one hole cut and no air ex is exchanged between the outside of the cabinet to the inside of the cabinet. But yet you get ample circulation through the fans that are on the heat exchanger systems or the thermal electric systems. So how to, how to estimate internal heat loads? This is usually a very typical question that comes up and they say, you ask somebody, well, how much heat do you have in the cabinet? What's producing heat? And some people know, some people don't. So we're gonna just offer a few methods on how to calculate that. One method of course is the conductor method. You can take a look at all of the conductors coming into the cabinet and the total watts that are being produced uh, on, those, on those lines. And then you can take a look at all the lines leading out of the cabinet and the loads that would possibly or potentially be conducted on those lines and then subtract the two. And the remaining would be the wattage uh, or the heat, heat load that you would have to address through some type of cooling system. Or you could do a component type uh, calculation where you would look at power supplies, motor starters, or PLCs, or whatever goes into the cabinet, and figure out what each of those devices would add to heat load as they're functioning or operating. And then finally, a very common application that we run into with our heat exchangers is cooling drives cabinets. And then if you ever wanted to figure out what the load of a drive is, you could convert the horsepower to watts, and then you take the efficiency of the drive, which is typically 95%. So in this case, a 60 horsepower drive would produce about 2,200 watts of uh, heat load, or if you converted that, it's basically 3.413 times the watts to get BTUs, so you'd get about 7,600 BTUs of cooling required. We do have a calculation tool that we'll show you later on how to select these products, and you can work in either watts or BTU as your heat load variable. So let's take a look at a couple of ways of solving these heat load problems. Our first uh, product that we would address is a sealed enclosure cooler again, and it's an above ambient cooler, and this device uses a heat sink to transfer the heat from the inside of the enclosure to the outside of the enclosure. Again, if the outside of the enclosure is colder than the inside of the enclosure, you, you have a good application. If the outside of the enclosure is hotter, there's no way that you can reject the heat from the inner cabinet. So the heat sink coolers, they're pretty reasonable. They start at $590, and they compete uh, pretty much with uh, unsealed enclosure fan coolers. And a typical cabinet you'll see in the field, you'll find dust and dirt, and uh, I'm sure over the years you've seen a number of cabinets that just weren't cared for or they were left open or a number of reasons, and so that's another good reason to use a sealed enclosure cooler. Our sealed enclosure cooler technology is available in three different sizes for the heat sink coolers. 
And the way the industry typically rates these devices, it looks at a 20 degree spread or delta between the inside cabinet temperature to the outside cabinet temperature. So like the HSC22 has a thermal conductance of 22, which means that for one degree C uh, rise, you get 22 watts of cooling. So what you would do is take that 20 degree rating times 22, and you would get 440 watts of cooling with a 20 degree C temperature differential between the inside to the outside of the enclosure. So just a quick way to, to see how those devices work. The HSC45 is essentially double the cooling capacity, and then the 68 is triple the, the cooling capacity, roughly. These devices can also be purchased in 12, 24, 48 volts DC and 115 and 230 volts AC. And they're a patent pending device, and they're all UL listed or recognized depending upon how the wires or how the uh, control voltage is terminated to the system. And just to give you an overview, a uh, top view, so if you look at the top on the right side, you get the air from the internal cabinet, the hot air from the inside of the enclosure comes across the fan, and there are fins that are uh, bonded to the center plate, which is sealed from the outside. So as the fan blows across those fins, it starts to reject the heat to the outside, but because we're rejecting the heat to the outside, that center plate becomes cooler and cooler so that you're cooling the inside of the cabinet, but you're heating the uh, air flowing from the outside fan, but you don't care because it's on the outside. So what we're trying to gain here is the cooling effect of that heat sink or those, um, those devices cooling very nicely inside of the, the unit from the inside, and you're rejecting the heat to the outside. Another very common request that we have because of the types of environments that these systems are used in either wash down, spray down, or they could be used in wastewater plants, we have a corrosion resistant model that is 316 stainless steel and the actual bonded fins are treated with an epoxy coat which is highly chemical and salt resistant. So that would be our NEMA uh, 4X version. And uh, those are very, uh, very durable in those applications where you could have hydrogen sulfide gas. We all know when you get hydrogen sulfide combined with uh, uh, vapor or moisture, you get sulfuric acid, and that doesn't do well on metal surfaces. Uh, the fans themselves are potted on the outside, so they can uh, be subjected to direct cleaning water spray and chemical spray. Here's an application inside of a plant. They were using an air conditioner and they were having a lot of trouble finding spare parts since the machinery came from Italy. And so we were able to help them quite nicely by putting in one of our larger heat sink coolers that does about uh, 1,400 watts of cooling right into the plant. And this summer, they had an especially hot plant environment, and we were able to keep the drives control and CNC cabinet in a good temperature range so it didn't have any trips or, uh, or faults. The next product we'll talk about is one of the core technologies here at Advanced Cooling Technologies is the heat pipe cooler series. And essentially, the heat pipe coolers use a, a number of these heat pipes that are bonded with fins. And so on the inside of the enclosure, the, um, the heat from the inside of the cabinet causes the working fluid inside of these heat pipes to boil and they go to a vapor and as they go to the outer cabinet, the vapor condenses and then travels back by gravity. And this heat exchange of going from a liquid to a vapor becomes a thousand times better conductor than a solid piece of copper. So we're able to very effectively and efficiently transfer the heat load from the inside of the enclosure to the outside. And again, we have fans blowing over the inside of the enclosure and fans blowing over the outside of the enclosure. So essentially what you see here is the side view of a heat pipe cooler, and there you can see the, the multiple heat pipes. There's about 12 heat pipes in each one of these coolers, and each one of those tubes is capable of about 500 watts of cooling. So you can see we can do a lot of heat transfer in a, in a relatively small package. And again, so you have the hot air on the inside of the cabinet is blown across those heat pipes, and because we're rejecting the heat to the outside, those heat pipes become cooler and cooler, so we're 
as the fan is blowing on the inside, the air going from the, the left to the right becomes cooler on the inside of the cabinet. And then the cool air on the outside of the cabinet is rejecting the heat that's being transferred by the heat pipes. And because it's on the outside, again, we don't care that the heat is being rejected out there. We want to get rid of that heat inside the cabinet. And again, there are multiple sizes of these devices, ranging from about 300 watts to about 1,600 watts of cooling. And again, you have all the different NEMA values and different voltage values to apply this product. The difference between the heat sink cooler and the heat pipe cooler, it's a bit more dense package. It does react faster to a variable heat change. So if you have a high power drive system and you need to address that drive firing up very quickly and you want to make sure there's no false trip, the, the heat pipe cooler may be a, a better choice. Or if you don't have a lot of room uh, for a 12 by 12 inch type cooler and you only have a 5 by 5 inch hole that you can allot, the HPC 15 might fit in some applications where the HSC heat sink cooler may not. So just your choice and all of those dimensions and everything are available in our documentation. Here's an application uh, in a drives cabinet, and again, here's where they replace their air conditioning units. And a lot of the times, they'll re the, the customers will come to us with their applications because of the reliability problems with air conditioners. You have to make sure that the refrigerant levels are maintained, that um, filters are not clogged, because the filters get clogged, the compressors go high. Again, uh, air conditioners are a great way to cool a cabinet, some applications, though, could, could uh, really take advantage of the heat exchanger versus trying to use an air conditioner if you have a good delta temperature between the inside to the outside of the enclosure. And again, the HPC family is uh, also available in corrosion-resistant models. Finally, in products, we'll talk about the thermoelectric or solid-state enclosure air conditioners. Uh, these are available in 90-watt formats or 300-watt formats, and the 300-watt is roughly about 1,000 BTUs of cooling. You can also get them in a NEMA 4X op um, option, and they're very precise in their uh, temperature control, and there's also no vapor compression cycle, so the reliability is very, very high. Some applications where you just can't take a lot of vibration uh, you or you have a, like a, a high-end measurement value that you're taking. Some of these devices can't take the vibration of a compressor motor going on and off. It actually causes errors in the measurement of certain type of uh, applications, especially in medical or military. And there is an optional heating mode with this device. So it can either go from cooling the cabinet or heating the cabinet, depending upon your application. So you think you're interested, how do I select it, price it, and design it into my system? Well, if you uh, end up on our website, there's a number of different areas. There's a resource section where all of the uh, catalogs and brochures are available via PDF. And then each of the products has a very dedicated page. And on those dedicated pages are resources like DXF and step files, uh, power curves, uh, just really good technical information on each of the product series. And then, if you want to communicate very effectively with us, you can go on to the sealed enclosure selection tool. And in that selection tool, you can input all of the variables for your application. And you can either work in degrees C or degrees in Fahrenheit. And you can set up it in measurement in inches or millimeters. Or you can then select where you mount the uh, uh, cooler. You can say that it's in a wet or dry space, indoors or out. You can work in watts or BTUs. And then you put in the size of your cabinet and what the expected internal heat load is, or uh, excuse me, yes, heat load, and then what the maximum allowable temperature is for your application on the inside and what you would expect to see on the outside of the cabinet. And once you select that, you just hit a very simple calculate button. And if there's a solution, what it'll do, it'll actually highlight the best choice in green, which you can kind of see there, which is a little tough. <laughs> but uh, from there, that choice can then be clicked on and selected by price or size. And it goes right <coughs> excuse me, into our um, uh, company store. 
and from there you can select the NEMA type and voltage type to get a final price. From here you can either order on the web or you can contact us directly to either go through a local distributor or perhaps work on net 30 terms with us. And then, as I mentioned, the drawings are also available so you can work in SOLIDWORKS or CAD to actually put this into your design. Then we also have available a series of videos, so if you're interested in seeing how do I install this, what are some of the different technologies, you can spend two or three minutes viewing each of these really handy videos to see if it's really something that you want to take on and, and put into your application. So that's pretty much it for today. Everything you see here today is going to be sent to you, uh, the presentation will be sent to you, as well as some of the key links. Great. Thanks, Mark. <clears throat> so at this time, let's begin our Q&A. I'd like to remind our attendees that if you have a question, you can submit it in the chat box. Um, let's see. Mark, we have a question here. What's the difference between the HSC and HPC heat exchangers? Okay. As I mentioned uh, earlier, it's the heat transfer method. One utilizes a bonded fin technology. That's the heat sink cooler. And essentially, you're having impinging fans going on the inner cabinet and the outer cabinet to do the heat transfer. The other device is a heat pipe cooler, again, utilizing that, that really um, high-value heat transfer method of using that uh, heat exchange between going from a liquid to a vapor. That gives you a huge benefit on transferring heat from the inside to the outside. And the HPCs give you a little bit more density cooling package than the HSCs. Okay. Uh, Mark, here's another question from an attendee. Can I mount either units on top or sides of the enclosure? It depends on the NEMA rating, but if you have a NEMA 4 or 4X unit, you can mount them in any orientation. So if you have a NEMA 12, <clears throat> the caveat there would be is that it's not a potted fan and can't be sprayed down. So you would definitely need to use a NEMA 4 or 4X. Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh, you mentioned you had an e-commerce uh, interaction on your website. Do I have to order the product online? Uh, no, again, you can uh, work with uh, our local representatives because we do have quite a few, <coughs> pardon me, around the country. And then, uh, or you could work on net 30 terms or you could order direct off the web. All right, we will end it there. That concludes today's webcast. If we did not get a chance to answer your question, please reach out to mark.stevens at one-act.com. He will do his best to respond to your questions. The slides from today are also available upon request. Our thanks to Mark Stevens, CSIA, and everyone out there for joining us. A recording of this webinar, along with our other webinars, are available on our website at one-act.com. Have a great day.